Talk ABC 10 News at 5 starts right now. Thousands of unaccompanied migrant children arrive in Texas. How the CBP here in San Diego will help process them. One year into the pandemic, there's still only one fully approved treatment to help fight the virus. Why it's so difficult to develop an antiviral treatment for COVID. Plus two employees at a local restaurant walk off the job during their first week. Why business owners are struggling to fill those open positions despite high unemployment. ABC 10 News at 5 starts now. The United States is dealing with a surge of migrants at the southern border. The Biden administration now scrambling to address the issues as thousands of unaccompanied children arrive in Texas. Good evening, I'm Lindsay Pena. And I'm Steve Atkinson. As ABC 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala explains, we are now learning San Diego's CBP sector has stepped in to help Texas when it comes to processing some of those migrants. They don't leave their home country because they want to. They leave their home country because they have to. Many migrants, including thousands of children and teenagers, are streaming into Texas seeking asylum. It could be environmental situation, violence, threats. The situation for CBP in the Rio Grande Valley sector becoming so overwhelming that San Diego's Border Patrol sector has stepped in to assist with processing some of the migrants at local facilities. Scheduled flights are coming into San Diego from Texas. CBP telling ABC 10 News they're still operating under CDC guidelines for the COVID-19 pandemic. In a statement saying in part, CBP is making every effort to remain within CDC guidelines and mitigate long periods of processing and holding to minimize potential exposure to our workforce, those in custody and the community. Once processing is complete, these individuals will be expeditiously transferred out of CBP custody. They say where each migrant goes next is based on each individual's situation, although many are sent to Mexico. Enrique Morones with Gente Unida, a human rights border coalition, says many migrants risk it all, fleeing their home countries in search of a better life, pointing out the deadly crash in Holtville earlier this month that claimed 13 lives. Crossing borders because of this situation is an international human right and it should be respected. Customs and Border Protection's latest statistics show that in San Diego's sector, there has been a rise in migrant apprehensions since last year. For unaccompanied minors, a 64% increase. For single adults, a 138% increase. But for family units, a 13% decrease. We do get contacted by several organizations and sometimes by the families themselves. And we lend our help in any way that we can. Morones says that includes referring attorneys and helping find shelters as some await immigration hearings. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. The Biden administration has been criticized by some lawmakers, including Congressman Darrell Issa, for the crisis at the border. In an exclusive interview with ABC News, President Biden asked migrants not to come to the U.S. at this time. Turning now to coronavirus, as vaccine eligibility opens up to more San Diegans, there are still a lot of people left off that list. Hairstylists and barbers who work very closely with their clients every day, they're not anywhere in the county's phases to get vaccinated right now. Our ABC tennis reporter Jennifer Dela Cruz shows us why they say they should be eligible. As a hairstylist in Rancho Bernardo, Corrine comes face to face with clients every day, so she's eager to get the vaccine. We should most definitely be getting vaccinated. We should at least be on the list. The beauty industry, like many others, has been hit hard during the pandemic. The Salado Salon owner says she's felt targeted by restrictions for a whole year now. Hearing the governor specifically refer to our industry, the beauty industry, as super spreaders, and that we wouldn't be reopening until movie theaters in the very last tier. It has felt very much like our industry has been so chastised and un unnecessarily. With San Diego County now in the red tier, hair salons and barber shops can open indoors with modifications. She says they've taken every precaution to keep themselves and their clients safe, but she wants that extra layer of protection. We've proven to be the safe industry that we are, that we've strived to be. It's just a matter of comfort for our clients. It's something that I think for them would only further ensure that they're safe. And that's the most important thing, really. As the county moved through phases, healthcare workers, seniors, grocery store employees, and teachers slowly became eligible for the vaccine. But there's still no official guidance on where workers in the beauty industry fall in line. To see these various industries that don't work in such close proximities with people on the list and us not even included, it's just maddening. I personally don't feel 
at all like we should be prioritized. We should just be considered. Jennifer Dela Cruz, ABC 10 News. So right now the county is currently vaccinating people in phase 1C. Specifics on who is eligible in phase 2, they are yet to be determined. Many teachers are not using the system designed to make sure they get access to the coronavirus vaccine. When 80,000 teachers and school employees became eligible, the county wanted to make sure they had enough availability. So they set up a special website for appointments. However, so far only about 30,000 people have been vaccinated through that site. The county's Office of Education says they think many more teachers have been vaccinated, but there's no way to know for sure. Just because a teacher didn't use the website doesn't mean they didn't get an appointment another way. So if someone goes to Walgreens or CVS or Rite Aid for a vaccination, there's no way to see how many of those people worked at K-12 schools. As teacher demand goes down, those doses and vaccination staff will get moved to other locations. The county reported about 430 new local cases of COVID today. Our testing percentage has been holding steady at 3%. The county added that eight more San Diegans have died from the virus, nearly 3,500 since the pandemic began. A restaurant showed its appreciation for workers and volunteers who spent weeks at the Petco Park vaccination superstation. The Habit Burger has been rolling its food trucks out to give free meals to frontline workers throughout Southern California. The company thought it would give health care workers at Petco Park a nice meal before the site closes Saturday. The Habit says it hopes to visit other vaccination sites in San Diego County. Scientists have made big strides in the fight against COVID-19, but there is still only one fully approved treatment and research shows it's far from a breakthrough cure. ABC 10 News anchor Derek Stahl is going in depth to explain why it's so hard to develop an antiviral for COVID. This week, Family Health Centers of San Diego started giving patients the latest authorized treatment for COVID-19, a new cocktail of manufactured antibodies from Eli Lilly. But outside of a few blends of antibodies like these that have an emergency authorization, there's only one fully approved antiviral that can fight the virus head on, remdesivir. Studies show remdesivir shortens illness time, but doesn't really improve survival rates. So there's a big push to develop a better, stronger antiviral. And UC San Diego's Dr. Davy Smith is helping lead the charge. Our job is to find therapies for people with early COVID, so to prevent people from getting into the hospital. That's our whole job. Dr. Smith is overseeing a series of worldwide trials for Operation Warp Speed to find the next big therapy for COVID. They're currently enrolling patients for trials on five different potential drugs and adding a sixth later this month. We have about 100 and some odd sites 137 sites, I think, now in the United States, and we have 30 sites internationally that are getting up and running. He says developing an antiviral is a lot tougher than developing an antibiotic to fight bacteria. For one, bacteria are big living cells that are easier to target. Viruses, on the other hand, hijack our own human cells, so scientists have to worry about friendly fire. And secondly, viruses can mutate faster. You would expect the virus to try to find a way to get around uh, any drug that you use. And what we have to do as scientists in these clinical trials is to figure out maybe which drug causes less of that or maybe um, use more than one drug. They're currently testing new blends of antibodies along with an inhalable drug and a pill that can interfere with the virus's ability to replicate. Scientists often do that by finding ways to add junk code to the virus's RNA, like installing malware on a computer to crash the system. But unlike some other viruses, SARS-CoV-2 has a tricky defense system. It essentially has a viral spell check. This coronavirus has a proofreading mechanism. It can go back and said, aha, you tried to trick me and put that fake base in there. I'm going to take it out and put a regular one in. Still, Dr. Smith says researchers have several promising therapies, and he expects new ones on the market this year. But he can't do it alone. They still need people to sign up for clinical trials. Derek Stahl, ABC 10 News. For information on how you can volunteer to be part of the next COVID breakthrough, go to our website, 10news.com. While COVID case numbers and fatalities are generally going down, experts say a fourth virus surge may have already begun. 15 states are now seeing cases go right back up. It's happening just as many of these states are easing up on restrictions. 
Six states have lifted their mask mandates. That is combining with new COVID variants to spark the new surge. The head of the National Institutes of Health says that Americans need to keep wearing masks and distancing while more people get vaccinated. We're on a marathon here and you don't want to give up in the last two miles because then you don't win the race. Dr. Anthony Fauci says right now it is a race between the COVID variants and the vaccine. He says we will only win that race if everyone continues to do what they need to do to stay safe. And you can track the latest coronavirus developments with the ABC 10 News app. You can find it for free in the App Store. President Biden has ordered all flags to be flown at half staff to honor the Atlanta shooting victims. Tuesday's shooting rampage left eight people dead across three different locations. Six of the victims were Asian women. A 21 year old man has been charged in the shootings. The order applies to American flags at the White House and on other federal grounds. And today, Asian American advocates and lawmakers testified before Congress on the recent rise in anti-Asian violence. ABC's Elwin Lopez reports on whether hatred was a motive in the shootings. The House Judiciary Committee taking up the issue of violence and discrimination against Asian Americans. Asian Americans have been fighting an additional virus of hate and bigotry. Anti-Asian rhetoric like China virus, Kung flu, have left Asian Americans traumatized and fearful for their lives. Among those testifying, California Representative Michelle Steele, one of the first Korean American women to serve in Congress. Combating hate is not a partisan issue. We can all agree that violence against any community should never be tolerated. The White House pointing the finger at the previous administration. Calling COVID, uh, you know, the Wuhan virus has elevated threats against uh, Asian Americans, and we're seeing that uh, around the country. Today's hearings on the heels of Tuesday's deadly shootings in Metro Atlanta. This has become almost a daily tragedy and has had a chilling effect on our community. Robert Aaron Long now charged with murder for killing eight people at three separate locations. Six of the victims, Asian women. Women are disproportionately impacted by anti-Asian harassment and violence in the past years. Police say they have not eliminated hatred as a motive, whether it be against women, Asians, or both. The investigation into a possible hate crime. Our investigation is looking at everything, so nothing is off the table. President Biden and Vice President Harris had a planned event to tout the COVID-19 relief package tomorrow here in Atlanta. They have now canceled that and instead will be talking to Asian American state lawmakers and community leaders in light of Tuesday's deadly shooting. Owen Lopez, ABC News, Atlanta.